Hello YouTube, my name is Alan Samsel and welcome to my channel, Alan's Cloud. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Docker again. Uh, it's been one of my recurring themes. I've, I've gotten uh, really familiar with Docker over the past several weeks and I've done a, a few videos of them, of the you know kind of handy ways to install it uh, using Proxmox is, is my particular hypervisor. Um, but I wanted to show you a very useful thing that I found a um, uh, Docker project uh, on Docker Hub that gives me access uh, to my iDRAC 6 uh, on my Mac. Um, it's a common thing that, um, or I, I guess it's a well known thing at this point, that one of the security features in the Mac uh, being able to get to the virtual console of an R710 through the I, iDRAC 6 or you know whatever server it is you're running um, is difficult these days and uh, I'll cover the reasons why and uh, show you this way to access it using Docker and uh, I think it's pretty handy and you might too. Alright so uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with it the iDRAC um, is a special card that is put into the um, Dell line of servers. This is that. Well, it's, it's actually called the Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller. Um, it's a way to either you know boot up, shut down, take a look at the fan speeds, any faults on the server itself. Even if the uh, server isn't running, you can go into the iDRAC. It's always running so long as the power is turned on, and you can actually you know give it a, a, a a push of a button, you know, click of the mouse, and the server will turn itself on. It's a very handy feature, and one of the other features of the uh, enterprise version of it, there's two different versions. Uh, it comes with a standard iDRAC, and then you can actually buy the uh, enterprise card, uh, which you plug in uh, on the motherboard. And that gives you a dedicated NIC for it, so that you don't have to share that uh, with the other uh, network interfaces on the whatever server it is you're running on um, so that's nice and uh, it, it gives you a couple of other features but one of the main ones that people use it for is being able to take a look at the virtual console so uh, I was able to, to use this while I was down in Florida um, I was you know on a work business trip and um, you know something came up I was able to log in remotely to all of my uh, gear via by my VPN and um, you know so I was able to log in a Proxmox I was able to shut down my virtual machine safely I was then able to run the updates that I needed to the Proxmox hypervisor and then I wanted to of course reboot the machine but you know being remote and doing a reboot of a machine I wanted to be able to know that it had gone safely and be able to watch that happen and so to do that normally I go to the uh, iDRAC virtual console and you know watch that happen uh, but when I tried to do that what I didn't realize at the time was I had just upgraded to Mojave before I went on the trip and the Java exception the security workaround that you can do uh, under the Mac environment in order to be able to do this and in fact I think you you do it under the Windows environment as well um, it didn't work under Mojave it, it was pretty much that that functionality is broken uh, I can still do it here in, in uh, uh, High Sierra but um, uh, here lately they must have done an update because I tried it the other day before uh, you know thinking about doing this video and uh, still couldn't do it so here let's uh, take a look at the interface so when you go to your iDRAC uh, address which is a separate IP address from you know probably your your hypervisor itself I think default it's um, I think it's what 120 I, f I forget what it is on these uh, Dells but when they boot up you know there's a um, I think it's a, a control and one of the letter keys to be able to go ahead and, and enter uh, the configuration settings for the DRAC itself and you can you know go ahead and change the IP address to whatever you you need to and you can you know for security reasons have the iDRAC and anything management wise for a server on a separate IP address range uh, if you so choose but you don't necessarily have to um, so the default password which is what I have it set to at the moment I'm about to uh, reset the this other machine here uh, it, it's root and then the password should be Calvin. Let me make sure I get that right. 
and see here at the top it's it's not secure um, you know that's that's gonna cause an issue uh, you probably have to give it an exception which I did here in Chrome to be able to uh, even get to this page here and, and have it come up um, but as I said you know even with the machine shut down you can come in and take a look at your 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 uh, settings you, uh, it's it, it takes a reading of all of the um, power consumption that the, the machine has done since you know it was um, set up and, and you can reset those values too if you want to clear out the logs and then you know keep track of that as well but over here on the right is 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 what I'm talking about this um, virtual console preview uh, right now I mean you can't really see it it's too tiny but there are actual uh, letters on here because this this is an up and running uh, Dell R710 uh, that is running Proxmox and uh, so that's actual the, the login prompt but you, you can't really see it um, and you can't really interact with it uh, at this point either you you actually have to go over here and hit this button uh, launch but what that does um, it actually downloads a little file and uh, here I'll just hit the button and we'll download it and uh, what that looks like let's let's go here and I'll bring that up so this this file right here is what it just downloaded and in order to even attempt to um, you know get this to come up on your Mac uh, and and use the security exception you have to remove all this garbage here at the end and then just basically call it that and use the .jnlp um, extension so and it's it's time sensitive so when you hit launch and you download that you only have I don't I don't know if it's a minute or two minutes to be able to take that extension off and then you know click on it and and get the Java piece to pop up but we'll go ahead and 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 click on that well and it, because of what it is it's not going to want to do it but we go in this way and we can do it. So Java pops up and you're going to hit continue here and um, for security applications must now meet the requirements for the high or very high security settings or be part of the exception site list to be allowed to run so right here what it's telling you is that I don't have this particular IP address in my exceptions and so where you set that in order to make that work you come here to system preferences and uh, in Java itself which it'll it'll open up a different um, window here you go to security and you can see here I've, I've got a different uh, drag in there we want to edit the site list and that pops up another window and we're going to hit add and we're going to put in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.211 colon four four three and we're going to hit OK. All right, so it added it to the exception list uh, under high. So we should be able to close that out and now double click on this. We're going to continue. And we're accept the risk and we're going to run. So what you don't see here, I got two windows pop up over on my other screen connecting to virtual console and then it fails um, so I'm not exactly sure why it keeps failing um, but you know that's even here on High Sierra where I had been able to get this to work so I found a different way to get to it to where I don't have to deal with any of these Java security exceptions and it works on Mojave and it works uh, in, in High Sierra it'll work wherever it is you're running Docker and um, so the key here is 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 that Docker, um, you know, once you've created a container and a package, uh, it pretty much you know keeps all of those settings. So somebody has gone through and created a Docker container, a very simple one, that is based off of guacamole, and um, lets you access the iDRAC functions, and um, you know has the proper uh, Java. Uh, version in there and um, you know it's perfect works works great super easy to set up and so 
if we go over here to uh, the next tab, Docker Hub, uh, the, the name of the guy is uh, Domistyle. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. D-O-M-I-S-T-Y-L-E and then slash IDRAC6 is the name of the actual package that he's created here, this container uh, on Docker Hub. And he's got several of them. I actually met him in a, a I, I think it was a, Linux server.io discord um, you know super nice guy I just happened to recognize his his handle that was the name he was using in there but um, so you scroll down through this and um, very easy to pull it docker pull uh, domicile slash idrac 6 if you just want to pull it um, but you know on the the page here for the for the github uh, not github for the uh, docker hub kind of shows you what it's what it looks like it's it's based on guacamole uh, so that's really what it is but um, the usage for setting it up inside of, of uh, a, a, a doc and creating the docker container is really easy he's, he's got it right here and you can actually kind of just highlight the whole thing and you know paste it into um, you know whatever uh, bash prompt it is you're using um, you know, since you're, I'm running a Mac, you can actually run Docker for Mac. Um, you know, I, I didn't like it uh, because it was a one gigabyte just to install Docker. Um, whereas, you know, I, I can run a virtual machine uh, pretty much anywhere and do this. Um, uh, so I thought, well, you know, let me, there's, there's a better way. And um, it turns out, you know, there probably is a better way, but I, I already had a virtual machine of Ubuntu set up. And uh, so I went ahead and just installed Docker inside of uh, uh, of that Ubuntu, um, and you know did it that way. So I bring that up here. So you can see here, I've, I've tried to blow this up as much as possible. I know it's a window within a window within a window, uh, but. Uh, I ran Docker version, so you can see I'm running the latest version there, 18.09.6. Um, and uh, let's see here, Docker PS. Yeah, so right now I've got Portainer running in there, and I do have other containers, but Portainer is the only thing that's running. So um, I can show you that as well. So here is Portainer, and I've got several uh, containers in here that are basically, I, I set up the first one, um, and then, uh, you know, the nice thing about this is, is I've got several Dell machines and, you know, the way that the Docker uh, command is set up to create this uh, IDRAC6 container uh, actually has the port information in there, but you can go ahead and, and, you know, change the external port to one higher. So that's all I've done here so that I could technically run all three of these uh, containers simultaneously and just you know uh, tab between them to be able to access the the Drax and um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire up this one here which is the the one for that machine and we'll start it it's the nice thing that I like about Portainer uh, I always create my containers uh, in docker at the command line uh, but to be able to pause them or you know check out their logs or anything like that portainers is, is just really handy for that particular purpose and uh, you know uh, like this one here it's running so we'll check out the logs here and just to see if it's up and running and it looks like it is and um, in case anybody gets antsy about this anytime you try to scroll up and read anything in here it's going to auto um, refresh the log and so the way you turn that off is just click that button and then you can scroll up and see if there are any errors or anything else but it doesn't look like there is it looks like it's uh, up and running perfectly fine okay so we'll go ahead and we'll go to uh, that running instance of this uh, IDRAC 6 uh, from Domistyle and we'll go up here and that one is here at 5801 and you can see here this is the uh, iDRAC interface so this this login PVE2 login again is is my Proxmox virtual environment that happens to be running on this machine and um, you know you can uh, watch the machine boot uh, and, and power cycle and and this screen refreshes itself 
um, you know, the, the iDRAC itself has some uh, other cool features. Uh, in virtual media, you can actually load up, um, you know, a virtual CD and in, say you wanted to install Proxbox and you had the ISO file on a network drive, you could actually uh, mount the ISO file uh, in, in and then launch it uh, and install it from the iDRAC itself. I watched a video the other day on, on how to do that and you know I knew it was possible but it's you know I'm sitting next to the thing so it, it actually goes a lot quicker if I go ahead and put it on a uh, USB thumb drive and just uh, you know install it the normal way from the from the USB port. But uh, you know with this one here again you don't have to fool around with java it's it's all contained uh you know inside of that container and the version of it never changes so um you know if you're a, a mac user or specifically a docker user and you want a very easy way to be able to uh you know take a look at the the idrac interfaces for any of your dell devices um this is it so uh you know, I, I didn't go through the installation process of the uh, container itself. Um, you know, if, if you watch any of my other videos uh, or watch pretty much any of the videos out there or follow the instructions, uh, you know, it's super easy. Um, you can copy and paste that line again into your bash prompt. Uh, you replace the uh, username and password for whatever your uh, login information is for your particular iDRAC. Uh, you know, I, I leave it root and then I give it a, you know, really good strong password. Um, so that's going to be unique to everybody's situation. But, uh, you know, I, I, again, this, this really proves out uh, one of the uh, useful features uh, in Docker itself and being able to run Docker in different locations. So I'm actually running an LXE container on Proxmox. Um, and I have these containers in there, but you know, it's one of those things where if I wanted to reboot that machine, I can't be logged onto those. So it made a lot more sense to be able to run Docker locally uh, on either my MacBook Air using the Docker, or uh, I have VMware on there as well. So I can create a, another Ubuntu uh, virtual machine or just copy that one over uh, to it. And, um, you know, and then here on, on my Mac Pro at home, um, you know, anytime I want to access those, I, you know, I can fire up that virtual machine. Docker's running in there. I can, um, you know, fire up uh, the particular instance of the container that I want for whatever Dell machine I want to get to. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I find it kind of handy. Um, it may be the, you know, going the long way around. Um, I may, you know, uh, there may be a, a better way to do this, but, um, you know, this works for me. So hopefully this uh, helps somebody out there uh, who is dealing with these uh, iDRAC machines and is tired of dealing with all the Java exceptions and, you know, clicking on the different uh, ways to get to it. And, and, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But, you know, if somehow you've lost uh, the capability or like you've got transition to Mojave, this is uh, definitely a, a different way to do that. Um, so... Uh, hope it helps. Have a good one.